Greetings, scholars! In today's case study, we'll be looking at how damage is calculated in the core Pokemon games. Damage is, of course, the basic gameplay mechanic that allows one to win battles. Reduce your opponent's hit points to zero before they do so to you in order to win. This is the most basic, essential rule to most RPGs. As a player, principles like this should only come naturally, as the game will do the math for you. However, as a designer, you should consider how damage is dealt, whether it's a simple attack versus defense, or an equation complex enough to require advanced algebra to solve. In the core Pokemon games, the amount of damage dealt is determined by the following equation. I am using the formula the way Bulbapedia expresses it. There are multiple ways to write out or simplify the equation, but this one is derivative from the game code, specifically 5th generation games, Pokemon Black and Pokemon White. Interestingly enough, a nearly identical calculation was figured out through thorough testing of the Diamond and Pearl games that was simply lacking in some of the specifics that the code helped clarify. Damage equals 2 times your Pokémon's level, divided by 5, plus 2. Multiply all of that by the chosen attack's power, times the offense's attack, divided by the target's defense, that product then divided by 50, plus 2. That is the basic damage output. However, multiple outside modifiers can provide an extra punch or nerf it into nothing. Modifiers such as number of targets, like in double battles, Weather conditions, like rain, which hinders fire-type moves. Same type attack bonus, which allows an electric-type's thunderbolt to deal more damage. Type effectiveness, and more. This is a long-form algebraic equation where you're solving for damage as if it were X or Y. Now. I know it looks a lot more complicated than you might have originally thought. It's rough when you see these for the first time. The first time I saw the calculation, I had thought, why is the level involved? Well, let's take a look at that. Let's make up an example. Say, your first match with Blue. You choose Charmander, he chooses Squirtle, both starting at level 5. Using made-up numbers here, Charmander has Scratch, base damage of 40, with an attack of 20 against Squirtle's 18 defense. This time we'll leave out the level part of the equation. Rounding down, that's 3 points of damage, about right for the first battle. That would take 5 to 8 turns, barring any critical hits to take down Squirtle. Now let's imagine the final championship battle. Both have trained and evolved their starters. This is now a bout between Charizard and Blastoise. You taunt him, using the same move you had when you first battled. Charizard scratches Blastoise. What? My Charizard's level 70 now, how come it's only dealing 3 piddly points of damage? It'll take upwards of 100 turns to do this. This is why they include level scaling in the damage calculation. The equations would actually look like this. Makes a bit more sense, right? Of course, realistically, you'd be using stronger moves at this point, but the example works. The next bit that I question is attack divided by defense? Why divide? Well, I did some experimenting with various equations to recreate similar results, but with a simpler equation. Let's go back to the previous example. We will assume the move's power still has to be multiplied, because otherwise every move would just add a flat damage to the final result. We will leave level out for now and add it if need be. The equation looks like this. Power times attack minus defense. To enter in our red versus blue example... Whoa, 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 way too much for level 1. Let's say we divide this by 20. 
If we want to be closer to the original result, anyway. Okay, that works, but... What if we swapped attack and defense? Oh. Oh, Pokemon don't deal negative damage. Heck, they even have that plus two at the end to ensure damage isn't zero. So suddenly you're doing no damage just because your attack is less than defense, which is not terribly uncommon in Pokemon. The power of your move means nothing if your attack isn't bigger than the target's defense. Plenty of games do have generally higher attack and defense, but Game Freak decided that all stats work on equal grounds. This way our EVs and IVs mean something equally across the board. If we were to change the way stats scale, we could get this to work. However, we should remain in the realm of Pokémon. From a cursory glance, a subtractive defense seems to actually further complicate things by bringing in the possibility of zero and negative results. It would seem that attack is divided by defense instead of subtracted because this game is balancing multiple fighters who are on relatively equal footing. Rather than the usual player, character versus monster, where the stats are worlds apart but create a compelling battle anyhow, Game Freak had to create a calculation that took equality into consideration. Because you are fighting against creatures that you yourself could be using. In a game where you have wildly higher attack and defense and you're almost always overpowering your opponent, this level of balancing may not be as important. But since we have to take both the attacker and defender into account, division helps keep things fair. Using attack divided by defense creates a tidy ratio that changes damage output by manageable, small increments. We then multiply by power and level to create damage worth dealing. This all translates easily into multiplayer battles, which in turn feel virtually the same as battles against non-player characters. The final bit of this equation I want to touch upon is the scattered known numbers that seem to further complicate things. I can't speak for each individual number, but I can say that they are all there for proper scaling. Doing the math out on paper, once you get to the part where you multiply the large numerator, you will notice the number is huge. Thousands, upwards of ten thousands. Dividing by fifty brings this down to sane levels that can then be applied to a Pokemon's HP. To put simply, if you find that the end result of your damage formula is too high for the game you're making, consider dividing it near the end, or even somewhere in the middle, wherever it makes sense for your special case. The final plus two is there to help ensure that at smaller scales, damage is not just one or zero. This helps not make early battles a total slog, I can say that there's more to this than what I went over, when to round the equation, specific moves that don't follow the calculation, whether multipliers apply to the end or with the base power. I seem to keep finding more f the further I look into this. I will leave links in the description to bring you to more detailed inspection. However, for the sake of this video and its purpose, I think the inspection ends here. As I touched upon earlier, Pokemon uses a sort of player character versus player character format where every stat block could be the players. This works itself naturally into multiplayer combat. In a lot of RPGs, your stats and damage calculation are not built to have player characters fight each other. These are single player games after all, why worry about PvP? It is up to the developer. They just have to be aware that if their damage formula is not built for it, PvP may be a mess with clear overpowered options. Using division and multiplication for deciding damage output will help bring things to more equal footing. The reason you may still feel overpowered in Pokemon games, despite working with such balancing, is due to trainers not evolving their Pokemon EVs that your Pokémon gather more of along the way. 
Having the option to switch in order to keep the super effective advantage, and finally, the fact that level is included in the damage calculation. Every five levels provide another two to the multiplier to further boost your damage. Just by being five levels higher than your opponents, you have that much of an advantage over them on top of the natural stat progression. This is arguably the most important part of the calculation right here. If you're feeling that your game is lacking a certain amount of damage progression, consider adding level scaling to your damage. Pokemon is pretty unique in that it uses a move system instead of everyone having a generic fight option that attacks with a weapon. This is more comparable to magic in most RPGs, where each move or spell has a base power that is further boosted by the user's magic stat. Just like how fire loses its power after gaining new spells like Fyra and Fyraga, Ember becomes similarly useless compared to Flamethrower and Fire Blast. If you're building a magic system in your game, don't be afraid to consider Pokemon an inspiration. Despite being a game for kids, Game Freak took serious care in their design, which is why both old and new players continue to love Pokemon. It's clear that for this reason alone we should look to these games for inspiration or a guiding hand. Now, with our first damage calculation analyzed, I hope we better understand the pieces needed to construct our own. Why we need to balance the formula from level 1 to level 100 and beyond, and why we may use multiplication and division instead of addition and subtraction. Any RPG worth its genre has a damage calculation that does all of this and more. Decide on a rudimentary one early on, and add or change things as you see fit to come up with your own perfect equation. Don't be afraid to start it from scratch if it's limiting the growth of your game, and test it from every angle. A lot of game design's puzzles have already been solved, allowing us to stand on the shoulders of giants to reach even further than those before us. Thank you for watching my first case study video. And thanks to the game design subreddit for helping me kinda make a little bit more sense of this. There was a point where I was a little stuck a little bit. I wanted a little bit of feedback and maybe somebody else's opinion because I'm not really experienced in all of this. All I know is from the player's point of view. I do intend on making videos like this regularly, when I can. Scripted videos that just kind of analyze different parts of game design, whether it's specifics like calculations, or level design, or heck, music. Could be anything. I hope they don't sound too luxury. Nah, I'm looking for more of a conversation. I hope you enjoyed this and we can continue our research together as games progress and our standards become higher. See you next time.